Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to a second episode of our mini series of Sha'ban. This Ramadan will be different. Last week, we talked about how to introduce this month with um, the first step was to uh, look back and see what went wrong last Ramadan. And it's very, very important that we do not forget our shortcomings. Uh, as uh, Sayyiduna Umar ibn Khattab uh, used to uh, teach us, uh, remind the Muslims to hold yourself accountable, to be the one who holds yourself accountable more than anyone else before the day that comes that you will be held accountable by Allah. And uh, so it's very, very important. One of the worst things uh, that a person can have in his uh, relation or her relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to commit sins or to commit short or to fall into shortcomings and then um, have, you know, um, carelessly or, or in a negligent way uh, and not feel uh, the impact of these things on uh, their life, not feel the remorse, not feel that I need to get better. Um, and that's one of the um, dangerous things uh, that uh, the Salaf used to be very afraid. They used to consider that as a punishment in itself for the person to be numb uh, of, um, uh, you know, of because of the sins uh, or when it, uh, when it comes to them uh, uh, falling short in their ibadat. So we've established that last week. Today, I want to talk to you about changing the goalpost. Ramadan is not starting in two and a half weeks. Ramadan, or 20 days, Ramadan is starting um, now. And I'm, I'm not shifting the calendar or anything. I'm saying that the mindset that Ramadan is starting in 20 days is a mindset that often leads to saying, I am going to stop um, my bad habits. I am going to stop my regular sins, I am going to stop um, my bad manners in 20 days. And that does not work. That never works. You um, are certain yourself that that never works because you have tried it and it failed over and over again. Ramadan requires endurance. It requires resilience. And this is only attained with um, taking a, a lot of patience, with playing the long game, as we say. Um, the Salaf used to say that uh, Rajab was the month of seeding and Sha'ban was the month of irrigation. Ramadan is the month of reaping or harvest. And whoever doesn't seed on time or doesn't irrigate on time, they're not going to harvest anything that is beneficial. And so, um, you know, like many people give the example of Ramadan being a marathon and that you need to start training uh, or that you would pull a muscle, a uh, spiritual muscle on the, you know, first couple of nights of Taraweeh, that's too much. Uh, first, uh, you know, you start uh, from zero pages of Quran a day to 20 pages of Quran a day. And then all of a sudden you're like sleepy after three pages, yawning the whole time and distracted. You can't. You need to understand your nafs. You need to uh, get ready. You need to understand that if you're going to uh, cut down on caffeine, if you're going to cut down on uh, nicotine, if you're going to cut down on anything else that your uh, body is dependent on, you're going to face withdrawals. And these are things that, you know, you took yourself that way. And you need to uh, understand that it takes a little bit of uh, him, a little bit of uh, strong uh, motivation to overcome the urges and the withdrawals and all the kind of things. And, and, and it's, it, you're just making it harder on yourself to succeed in, succeed in Ramadan when you start that plan on the first day of Ramadan. You start now. If you have not cut down on your caffeine intake, you must cut it starting from now. If you have not cut down from cigarettes or cut down from any of the other things that you are dependent on throughout the day, even sugar, right? then you must learn to start cutting them down now in preparation of the same. 
Of course, we know that a beautiful, beautiful hadith in Bukhari and Muslim that Aisha radiallahu anha reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to fast all of the month of Shaban and that he used to fast all of Shaban sometimes except the last day and sometimes except the last two days and that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to fast uh, most of Shaban and that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa never fasted an entire month from beginning to the end uh, uh, for the exception of Ramadan or after Ramadan except for Shaban and all of these hadith are in Bukhari and Muslim uh, authentic hadith different narrations to show how important it is to start preparing for Ramadan if you have not started fasting then it is very important for you to start fasting and preparing all of Shaban. There is a hadith that comes in, uh, we'll talk about it next week, with pertaining to the discouraging of fasting the second half of Shaban. The, uh, yeah, the position uh, where most of the scholars are at is that it is for people who have not started preparing for Ramadan and uh, started fasting the last days of Shaban. Um, with the mindset that I'm just uh, expanding on Ramadan. Like, you know, there's a difference between somebody who wants to pray uh, two rakatin sunnah uh, before um, uh, before Dhuhr, and then a person who says, I'm going to start Dhuhr early and um, pray five rakat, right? So that's absolutely very, very two different things. And that's the criteria why the Prophet ﷺ discouraged those who want to start uh, basically fasting for Ramadan before Ramadan started. And so he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the hadith, that, uh, you know, once Shaban is passed, and if you're not used to uh, prepare for Ramadan, then it's kind of the time that it's Iqamat al-Salah. You don't start as a sunnah when there's Iqamat al-Salah. So Ramadan is getting too soon, and um, that should not be the case. But we are still in the, um, you know, uh, first 10 days of Shaban, and so there's still time to begin that habit. And if you do continue, then the majority of scholars say that if you did fast uh, Shaban from its beginning, then there's no discouragement on fasting to the end of the month, inshallah ta'ala. The most important thing that I am leaving you with tonight is to talk about the middle night of Shaban. It is coming in six days, which is next Thursday, inshallah ta'ala, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us to live that long. The middle night of Shaban is uh, known to the Salaf, to the predecessors of uh, us, of our Ummah, to be uh, the greatest night of forgiveness. And, and no, it's not taking the place of Laylatul Qadr, but there's different things. Laylatul Qadr requires a lot of effort, a lot of faith and anticipation, fasting that day, praying that night, reading so much Quran, uh, pleading to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and dua. Where, whereas Laylatul Nusl Shaban, is basically your year-long effort being reviewed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that it is a, um, it's a passive night. It does not, there is no re- specific requirement for an act of worship to attain forgiveness. There's only uh, specific two requirements to avoid, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says in the authentic hadith, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks over the entire creation on the middle night of Shaban, and forgives all of the creation, except for someone who worships something or someone besides Allah, a polytheist, or somebody who has enmity or hard feelings in their heart, uh, such as you know, the mushrik or mushahin. In a narration that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angels, meaning give these two people who have enmity towards each other uh, give them defer them some time uh, defer the forgiveness until they reconcile and of course what we're talking about is the um, enmity that does not have um, is not you know, based on uh, principle, on belief, on iman. It's not about enmity towards the oppressor or enmity towards uh, somebody who took away your rights or harmed you or even enmity towards, um, uh, you know, a person who, um, let's say, like, uh, you know, took a loan uh, from you and, and, and wouldn't return it. These things that ulama spoke about, these are rights uh, that for the people. It's not about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking us 
to forgive those rights? No, absolutely not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants justice to be established, but rather it is the enmity that is based on this dunya, on the greed of this world, on gluttony, on who got more profit, on uh, you know, on who uh, got more food, on who got better car, on you know, the envy, the the uh, race to get uh, things in this dunya, and the enmity that comes out of this. Uh, you know, brothers, sisters, uh, uh, parents, and children who have enmity towards um, each other because of inheritance, because of issues pertaining to money. That is the enmity that would prevent someone from comp complete forgiveness uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the greatest night of forgiveness where it is so easy to be forgiven you just need to be not one of these two people and this night coming in six days and so if you're going to think about I, I end this with what I started if you're going to think that Ramadan is going to start in two, two weeks you're going to miss it you're going to miss Ramadan you're going to miss preparing for Ramadan and you're going to miss the forgiveness that prepares you for Ramadan you need to start now until next week, insha'Allah ta'ala, we'll meet. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.